The jet day today is coming towards the end of the season, so we wanted to have an opportunity to give as many of the jets as possible uh, a flight to clear the cobwebs out and to get them positioned for their maintenance over the winter. So it's important to make sure the engines are oiled, that they've got hot, we've blown out all the dust and cobwebs, and for the next month, we'll still be open here at Classic Air Force, and you can come and see the jets, but they won't be flying again very often now until the new year. the jets have been displaying in between that we've had the opportunity for visitors here to come and fly in the passenger aircraft like the de Havilland Rapide which is an eight-seater vintage biplane and if you really fancy turning your world upside down you can do aerobatics in the de Havilland Chipmunk in fact we just watched one in the overhead here just a few moments ago. Children have been riding in the, uh, the airport uh, fire engine around the site and of course there are all the static aircraft and the, the simulator that you can go in as well plus uh, a few cockpits a venom fighter jet cockpit and glider cockpit you can come and sit in so we've got a month left now of the season we will be closing on the, the second of november um, we'll be closed there for about three months uh, the opportunity to finish the maintenance of some of the aircraft that you've seen around today and get them all flying and ready for the new season next year, both flying in air shows and also passenger flying as we just discussed, but also the opportunity to just see aviation as it used to be. Now, these days we're so familiar with walking down a metal tube, getting on a metal tube, zooming off somewhere, having some lunch and a drink on the way and getting off down a metal tube. I think what we're concerned about is that we do not forget how we got to that position with aviation. And our collection here is pretty much post-war um, up into the Cold War. And it's the aircraft where the jet pilots of the day were the bedroom pinups for the boys. It wasn't the footballers and the celebrities. It was these guys who were risking life and limb every day to push the boundaries of aviation and aeronautical design. Things like the Hunter and indeed the Meteor that was displaying this afternoon. Um, before these aircraft quite often went into the RAF, training fighter pilots, and also a lot of uh, a lot of work went on with some of the passenger aircraft like behind us here which is actually a, a bomber trainer with the varsity um, where there was a pod underneath where the trainee bombers would bomb aimers would sit and they would do bombing runs into the into the wash up in norfolk and drop the 10 bombs but these actually then went on to become navigation and pilot trainers for the airliners that we see today so one of, the, one of the important things about this collection is that whilst we have static aircraft that will likely never fly again, we're really concerned with keeping the aircraft operational and flying. So the challenge for us is, is, is keeping the skills going. Um, you can't just find something wrong with the aircraft, take the bit that's not working off and put a new bit on. There aren't any new bits. So you have to work out what is wrong with that piece of equipment, that piece of mechanical doofers, whatever it might do, and repair it and get it done and working again and then reinstall it in the aircraft. So you need really good engineers for that, not just fitters. Um, and also with pilots. These aircraft, a lot of them you'll see sit down on their tail wheel, um, and they were designed before all the difficulties with flight were, were designed out of aircraft. So they all have their individual nuances. And it's important if we're gonna keep them flying that we can continue to train pilots and young pilots that are coming up to the ranks today to be able to fly these aircraft and it is something of uh, an acquired taste. A lot of people just want to get into the cockpit of a, an Airbus or a Boeing and that's pretty much like flying a computer. You can do a lot of that these days on Microsoft Flight Simulator. These aircraft, there aren't any computers. Everything you do is a direct link by mechanical linkage to a control service. You have to know what it does and be able to use that judiciously in order to take the aircraft from the ground to the air and more importantly from the air to the ground.